For, from AT&T's perspective, we, we see the Internet of Things as being a very global uh, opportunity. And we see technology as having its own life cycle. First, it enables uh, opportunities. And then we see technology as you start moving along that pathway, that technology starts limiting opportunities. So then you end up with a virtuous cycle of needing a new technology to continue the, uh, the improvement. Our, uh, our analysts uh, at AT&T Labs uh, and scientists, they estimate, and this is estimation, that in the future there will be 10 to the 12th things connected to the Internet, or the Internet of Things. So I actually had to go and do the conversion. So a trillion devices, uh, objects, on the Internet, um, plus or minus a few billion. Uh, what, is, what are these objects going to be doing? And I think we heard some good examples of RFID tags. Um, you can actually, we're seeing in practice where RFID tag is talking to another uh, uh, data uh, or machine to where the cargo is actually being monitored uh, for humidity and temperature. Sends a signal to a compressor uh, climate control device that says, you know, this medical um, device or this medicine, uh, temperature starting to get a little too hot, we need to immediately cool it down. Well, that could be over any technology, wireless, fixed line, um, communicating. Both of them have an IP address, although you start running out of IP addresses very quickly with that many devices. Uh, fortunately, IPv6 will also enable us to have more devices on the Internet. So you can see no human intervention is required, and all of a sudden we've just made something much more efficient. And so instead of the person monitoring the environmental controls could actually be doing something else. Um, the other item that we're seeing at AT&T um, is something called machine-to-machine -machine computing. Uh, one of the early devices that we've seen is, can you imagine having um, a device on your person that takes your blood pressure, your temperature, all your vital signs, transmits wirely to your smartphone, you travel with your smartphone globally, and then that hooks up to whether it's Wi-Fi, uh, mobile, or uh, some other technology, back to your doctor's office, and then you're able to identify, you know, sorry, Jake, you've not been taking your pills, your blood pressure's up, uh, getting an SMS saying, you know, you need to get back on your schedule, uh, that type of opportunities. In doing so, one of the legal issues that we're starting to see is what is that technology from a cross-border trade perspective? Are we now providing a telecommunications service across borders? Do we need to have a license? Is it an app? What, what is this thing that now is empowering the individual but yet could actually be limited because a government's trade barriers um, and legal requirements have not essentially permitted this type of new technology? So I'll raise that as an additional opportunity for the Dynamic Coalition.